In 1959, Suffolk County had over 600,000 residents, but not a single college within its borders. Today, with three campuses spanning the length of the county, it is home to the largest community college in New York State. Clearly, Suffolk County Community College is a leader among community colleges nationwide. My name is Roy Van Ostrand, and my connection with the college started in 1959 or 60. They appointed a committee, I was one of them, to determine what, what facilities there were and what there should be for education beyond high school in Suffolk County. To establish the college, the County Board of Supervisors acquired a hilly 135-acre plot of land in Selden to become its first permanent campus. The opening of the Selden campus brought a diverse group of students who came there for a variety of reasons. Having graduated from Sachem High School, as you well know, Suffolk started in Sachem High School, and, so, and they also took some of our teachers when they moved here. It was just kind of around the corner, it seemed like a good place to come, so Suffolk was a good choice. And I've never regretted coming here. It was the best thing in my life. Among the top-notch students of the late 1960s was a man who would become the most high-flying Suffolk alumnus of all time. I wanted to go into aeronautical engineering at some point as a more convenient way to start college and a more economical way to start college. I decided to do my first two years in community college. It also helped because my older brother, John Gibson, also went to Suffolk County Community College, and it wound up being a very convenient way for both of us to continue to live at home for our first two years of college and still take engineering science, which dovetailed me very neatly into aeronautical engineering. After his success in space, Hoot Gibson returned to a hero's welcome at Suffolk County Community College. The education that I got at Suffolk County Community College was second to none. I finished my two years of engineering science, transferred into the University of California system, and I was at least on a par with, or perhaps even slightly ahead, of the people that I was going to class with. As the 60s came to an end, the excitement of a growing college gave way to a growing national divide over the Vietnam War. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, a memory of uh, something we, we were not used to dealing with. Off and on, uh, for almost a week, you had uh, students uh, coming together, uh, demanding to be heard. We used to sit down. I myself sat down with several student groups up in the administration building. There was a student demonstration here, and one of the things that they did was to drive all their cars onto Red Square and honk their horns. The students were split. Uh, they were split among those who, uh, you know, were against the war and those who were for it. The split was horrendous. The anger generated by the protesting, the long hair, the peace signs, the activism, was a kind of fury that I still can't get over. The student demonstration was really not uh, violent. They just wanted to be heard. And I think once the administration understood that, then you know, they acted appropriately. I finally said, we'll take Friday afternoon off, 12 o'clock on. Everybody get in the Red Square. I'll be there. I'll control the microphone. And everybody can talk and talk and talk. And they talked till 5 o'clock that night. It made it tense. But also, there was a kind of intellectual curiosity and tension that, that I think helped further, in a sense, education. Intellectual curiosity and tension were also driving forces in the emerging women's movement at Suffolk in the early 1970s. The women's studies program um, really has to be credited primarily to a faculty member who was still here, and that's Sandra Emma Child. I had heard um, an interview with Kate Millett, someone who had just finished her doctoral dissertation and it was turning into a book. And that book was all over the television, the newspapers and whatnot. I heard her talking and a light bulb went off in my head. And then I started here in September and even though I was hired to teach philosophy, 
What I really wanted to do was start working on feminist issues, and I did. As a result of the women's movement, mothers returning to school found support at Suffolk's child care centers. By then, the administration had taken over it, and they were willing to support it, and they put it together. And you know, there were certain people on the faculty and on the administration that were appointed to run this and set it up and do all that. All those people for all those years were not mentioned as people who started it, who wrote letters and did amazing things to get this idea just in the minds of people. And so I wrote a letter to uh, the newspaper and the Compass, and I asked if they would publish my list, and I had a list of about 150 names. By the mid-70s, the campus in Selden had become a well-established entity. It was time to begin the second stage of Dr. Ammerman's vision of a single college with three campuses. You know, one politician, his name was Grant. He lived out there, it's now called the Grant Campus. And he says, can, can you get started by September? That was six months. I says, John Gallagher, you're now going to be the dean of the Western Campus. For me, the, the, the most vivid memory would be those first months back in 74 when we were opening the, uh, the Western Campus. Uh, it was just an exciting time. There was uh, you know, all kinds of things going on. I sat down with people, and we began to uh, take it a piece at a time. We conceived of the building that's now known as the Sacticos Arts and Sciences Center. And in that, we brought a library, we brought a theater, we brought science laboratories, and we brought general purpose classrooms. So it, we tried to accommodate everything because we had nothing at the campus. But that became a major stepping stone and, uh, and a catalyst for a lot of things that followed. We were interviewed upstairs, what's now the Honors Cottage. Um, that cottage was where all of the faculty were housed, and there were 20-something of us in that one cottage that was our office. I am a graduate of the first class, the first graduating class of, in Brentwood, class of 1976. I, uh, I actually have a very nice, vivid memory of registering in 74 over on the Western Campus, which looks nothing today like it did then. In the late 1970s, the third stage of Dr. Ammerman's vision would begin to take form. Carved out of the Pine Barrens near Riverhead, it is a wooded setting full of the natural beauty that characterizes the east end of Suffolk County. On quiet mornings, it is commonplace to spot wildlife, and the plant life surrounding the campus is simply spectacular. The organizational structure of the Eastern Campus would also be unique to the college. Because of the smaller student population, separate academic disciplines would be combined and a variety of administrative areas would be merged. It's, it's a wonderful campus. It really is a very supportive environment, very nurturing environment. The teaching and learning is more generalized and more in the spirit of a liberal arts education. Uh, and so I, I think, you know, that being able to, to uh, you know, to be involved in a small institution that has that, that sort of liberal arts emphasis has been, um, I think, what makes this campus special and what, what has made uh, teaching here special. Suffolk County Community College has a proud history in athletics. On the Ammerman and Grant campuses, a total of 17 teams are active in Region 15 of the National Junior College Athletic Association. In 2003 and 2004, the Suffolk Clippers basketball team from the Ammerman campus were the back-to-back -back national champions of Division III of the NJCAA. The Lady Clippers were national champions in 2003. In addition, the women's cross-country team from Ammerman claimed the national title in 2007. On the Grant campus, the Longhorns baseball team has posted three consecutive Region 15 championships, with many of their top players moving on to some of the best four-year baseball programs in the country. Extracurricular activities have always been a special part of life at the college. Professor Ed Erickson has been a club advisor for many years. It's nice to see people discover things. And believe it or not, there are a lot of kids out here in, Suff in Suffolk County who never get into the city, are afraid to go alone, and that's okay. And so when I, you know, when I, when I had the offer to them that they could come with the group and not be lonely and still know somebody in New York, they took advantage of this. And they, they, were, um, they were enthusiastic about what they did. We also took trips to Boston, Gettysburg, upstate New York, 
I became a more interesting teacher because I, I began to get a better feeling for the students. I became more sympathetic to people in that age group. One of the longest running annual events at the Ammerman campus is the Halloween Festival. When my children were young, we'd always come here to the, um, the Halloween Festival for uh, campus activities. All the people in the area got to know the college and they went all out and I, I was very impressed with that. And then there are the concerts. Many show business legends have appeared at Suffolk County Community College over the years. The goodwill that Suffolk County Community College has fostered will serve the college well as it moves into its second 50 years. Being here at Suffolk, again, you look at the transition of the college and, and you're part of a wonderful heritage that's now beginning. Uh, it started back in, in the 70s and of course, as you can see, as you go through each decade, there is something about that, that era that's going to be uniquely different but still connected to the past. And to me, I think the, the, the sense of, uh, of value uh, the sense of community, uh, the sense of uh, uh, transforming lives has been, you know, consistent through those themes. And that excites me about Suffolk and that's why, again, you know, I'm, I'm here as an employee of the college and a steward of the college as well.